For more insight and early morning activity, I'm joined by David Bonson, Chief Investment Officer of the Bonson Group. Uh, Q2 earnings out this morning, I just talked about JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, those really setting the tone following that weaker, uh, that hotter CPI read. What's your reaction to this re- result, or these results? What's your level of concern, especially when it comes to margins, um, you know, from investment banking and loan growth as that continues to slow down? Yeah, I mean, you uh, have to remember that JP Morgan has $1.1 trillion of loans outstanding, and their loan loss reserves would be basically about uh, my lunch budget for today. So it really was a very, very small number. The issue is just that they're not getting that accelerated margin growth. And on the Morgan Stanley side, it has much more to do with balance sheet stuff. They just don't have a lot of trading revenues. Uh, they, they downplayed that business. Most of their uh, revenues come from the wealth management side now. And so it just was kind of an underwhelming quarter and it didn't lead to earnings growth. Um, so I don't think it's going to be a great quarter from the financials. I think both of the Morgans today set the tone for what will be a pretty lackluster quarter in financials, but also probably pretty near a bottom for the financials. They've really pre-priced in a lot of this bad news we expect in the months ahead. Yeah, I think, you know, on a broader scale, on a macroeconomic picture, a lot of people look at the banks as a bit of a bellwether of what they're saying, in addition to kind of, you know, some of the insight that we have gotten from the Fed and the Fed stance in terms of what's going to happen with the economy. And, and a few weeks ago, I'm sure you recall Jamie Dimon signaling what he has called like an economic hurricane. Could be, you know, Hurricane Sandy-like, maybe in best case scenarios, not as bad, but nonetheless, we get some sort of economic hurricane. Yeah, that isn't what Jamie said, actually. He was asked a question by the Wall Street Journal as to what they were preparing for, and he made the comment that any CEO should and could make any day, which is we're preparing for all sorts of outcomes, including it could be a hurricane. The very day that Jamie said that, J.P. Morgan's chief economic strategist announced that they were not of the belief a recession would be coming. Now, of course, I think a recession is going to come, but I don't think it's going to come as quickly as some people are forecasting based on where we are with the unemployment data. Um, either way, there is obviously a push-pull in the economy. There is uh, news pulling people into both different directions, and markets just really don't know what to expect there. But as far as uh, the idea that the banks are a bellwether for what could end up happening, I think that the banks actually have very boring businesses now. J- J.P. Morgan is a very diversified financial firm, but they don't have the level of uh, kind of proprietary balance sheet activity that we got to look to back before the financial crisis, before Dodd-Frank. So really, they're just essentially depository institutions that have a trading business, fee-based wealth management and asset management businesses. I think you're going to get a better bellwether when we start seeing from the cyclicals, industrial companies, things like that. And I think it's going to be a tough quarter. Here, right? I look at J.P. Morgan Chase right now. I'm looking at their earnings report. When you're looking at home lending, you're seeing that's down 26 percent year over year when we had a hotter than expected housing market. I'm really glad to hear that home lending is down 26 percent year over year. Uh, home lending was way, 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 way too high. It, housing has been in a bubble. Housing has to come down. Uh, you would think home lending would be down more than that based on the fact that mortgage rates went from two and a half percent to six percent. And and so I agree. I think car loans, credit card, bad debt, those things are good leading indicators. Their credit card bad debt hasn't gone up much yet, but I think it probably will if you start seeing rising unemployment. So, no, I agree that there's something to look to with it, but it's just a little premature. Most of this activity was April, May and June. And now they're reporting here in July what took place. And it really wasn't anything on a macroeconomic basis that shows a huge shift in activity. That could be coming, but we're trying to look forward, not backward. And and ultimately, the idea of the home market, it's a really important point that people see that for what it is. You want housing prices cooling down. You don't want people spending 55% of their income on their house payment. So overall, I just think that there's mixed data here. Yeah, tomorrow we're going to get some more banks, and I think collectively that gives us another layer of data to kind of support um, and parse through. We've got Wells Fargo, Citigroup. Those are going to be reporting. Uh, we'll have Bank of America, and then in Goldman also on Monday. What are you expecting for those companies? Is it going to be more of the same what we saw today? 
Yeah, I think Citigroup, Wells Fargo, and Bank of America, we pretty much perennially expect to be disappointed. Um, now, of course, they end up having some quarters that, that do quite well. But those are businesses that, unlike J.P. Morgan, lost most of their sort of exciting uh, activities. You remember during financial crisis, J.P. Morgan got to add Bear Stearns' good businesses. They got to add Washington Mutual. Morgan Stanley bought Smith Barney from Citigroup. Really, uh, the, the other businesses, I think, do not have the same growth engines. You can look at the stock performance. J.P. Morgan's up 400% since the financial crisis. Citigroup is down 90% since the financial crisis still today. So um, anyways, as far as what they're going to claim, it's going to be more of the same about mortgages, yeah. about refinances. And then Goldman Sachs is not a traditional bank, more like Morgan Stanley. They're more the investment bank side. And Goldman really depends heavily on trading revenue. And I think capital markets has, has been quite uh, dormant. And so I expect that Goldman will have a slow quarter as well. Let, let's pivot from earnings to, to CPI, because that is what has weighed on, the, weight, weight on the market certainly yesterday. And I think that's layered still into what we're seeing um, you know, today with the markets being under pressure. 9.1% in June. Highest since you have to go back to 1981. You got the Federal Reserve Economic Survey pointing to these elevated fears of a recession. I think we're at, you know, the concern of a recession and then pricing in a 75 basis points at an 80 percent chance that we're going to see that. And if I'm being honest, I talked to a lot of traders here on the floor of the stock exchange and some of them started talking about one percent, a full percentage point of, of the Fed, um, you know, hiking rates this next time around. I don't know how, how real that is, but the fact that that is now becoming a part of the conversation, I think, says something. What are your thoughts? Well, actually, it's an 80% chance this morning of a 1% rate hike. So I don't think it's just part of the conversation. I think it's what the market's pricing. The CME, CME Fed Fund's futures have completely moved. And, and I don't think it will change the terminal rate. You know, a lot of people are very focused on the rate at which the Fed gets there. Ultimately, doing 75 instead of 50 last time, doing 100 instead of 75 this time, it doesn't change what really matters, which is how high they end up going. And I continue to believe that there's some number at which they're going to end up stopping and blinking. Um, but they have to see unemployment get higher before they kind of chicken out. And they have to see credit spreads really blow out. Credit spreads are way up, but they haven't panicked markets yet. So um, I think that they're uh, in the CPI number. It was the fourth month in a row that goods inflation was actually down. But services inflations continue to go higher as the lagging impact of rent and, and kind of that uh, house prices factor gets uh, baked in. It, the, the core versus headline is very interesting. Energy was a big piece of that. And if somehow gas prices can avoid going back higher, it's very possible you get a reversal next month. But either way, the, the inflation factor is not really going to change much from either 75 or 100. This is so supply side driven. And I think that's the part that the market has not wanted to admit is that the Fed can raise the Fed funds rate to a better level. They need to. They've been completely distorting asset prices. But, but actually, the inflation side is much more money supply driven and ultimately production of goods and services in the economy driven. The actual cost of capital has had very little to do with this. Um, so it was a very, very bad day for those hoping CPI was going to uh, move the other way. But at some point that will come. The goods inflation is sort of the yeah. indicator there. We'll keep watching. What industries are you following for, for potential incremental gains or signs of a rebound or sectors that are going to rebound first? Yeah, I mean, there's no question energy still remains up on the year. It's gotten hit hard in the last few weeks and yet still is the best returns. It was the best returning sector all of last year. Uh, people can look to the conditions in Europe, uh, the supply demand imbalances and make their own decisions. Um, ultimately, you're, we're talking right now about oil being in the 90s, close to 100 as a recession number. Oil should be at 50 if we're heading into a recession. And yet I think energy still pretends a lot of opportunity. Consumer staples is what I would like the most here. It's actually done quite well over the last couple of weeks, considering all the pressures in the market. Pepsi the other day was up as they released their earnings. And the reason is that they're able to have pricing power. They can yeah. pass on the impact of higher input prices to the customers, and ultimately those margins, I think, become sticky. 
So we like consumer staples and more defensive sectors in this environment. David, appreciate your time and your insight. David Bonson, Chief Investment Officer at the Bonson Group.